Dynamic control or optimization is also known as uh, model predictive control, um, and we're going to cover we're going to cover some of the uh, the framework um, in this section, and uh, and then solve it in a uh, next video. We'll solve uh, these problems in Excel, in MATLAB, Python, and Simulink. So this is just a tutorial on. Um, the framework. Uh, so we're going to solve uh, this problem right here, which is um, a statement of the optimization problem for model predictive control, um, where we're trying to minimize. Uh, we're trying to minimize the difference between uh, the model predicted value and maybe some uh, trajectory uh, that we have defined. So for example, um, let's say my uh, current state is here and I want it to follow that trajectory and my model prediction, if I do nothing, it may do what the dashed line shows. Okay, so I'm gonna take control actions then to drive it uh, to minimize the deviation between the trajectory and the model predictions. Now in doing that, I ha have a, um, a model here. Um, if it's linearized, it could be a uh, linear MPC. Um, if there are no constraints, you, it reduces down to linear quadratic regulator, for example. If, but I have um, you know, different norms here that I can use. So if I use the one norm, then that means I have my Y trajectory minus my model values, and I take the absolute uh, value of that. If I have uh, the two norm, then I do my trajectory minus my model. I square that and then take the square root. If it's um, infinity norm, then I'm gonna try to minimize the maximum deviation from the trajectory. And so there, I'm gonna take it to uh, approaches as uh, approaches as infinity, one, my, one over infinity. So that's just actually gonna take the maximum. We don't actually implement it this way. Um, there are other ways to, to implement that. Okay, but this is the uh, statement for uh, predictive control. You can also add uh, additional terms here that, for example, minimize um, the movement of the uh, manipulated variables. Okay, so any delta P movement. Uh, there's other forms as well. But essentially, you have an objective function here that you're trying to minimize subject to uh, these equations or the model equations. Okay, so we have a system and we're going to say that we have inputs P and then outputs uh, Y and then states X. So this is just a, um, a schematic that shows this uh, future horizon. Again, you have a reference trajectory uh, that you're going to try to follow. Um, and then here is my predicted output. So I'm going to try to drive this predicted output to match with the trajectory by using um, these uh, predicted control inputs. Okay, so this is current time. This would be like time equals zero. And then this is looking off into the future. So we have a model that can predict into the future. And so we know, uh, you know with control actions, as we move those up or down, how that's going to then influence um, our future trajectory. Okay, now these were the past um, inputs over here, and uh, we may want those so that we can calculate our current model values, and, and we did that with an estimator. Okay, so the first example that we're gonna show is in Excel, um, and what we're going to do is manipulate um, the uh, the MV movement uh, to get this red line to match with the black dashed line. Okay, and the statement for this, we're just gonna minimize the sum of, of uh, squared errors uh, between the trajectory and uh, the velocity. So this is an example, with just a very simple differential equation. We're using this to describe the motion of an automobile. Okay, so we have this also in MATLAB. Again, same system of equations. In Excel, we had to solve this. Um, we had to put an explicit solution here. We couldn't, we can't solve um, implicit ODEs in Excel, so we had to um, 
solve for the explicit solution and then put that in column G. In MATLAB though, we can put in the differential equation um, in uh, time derivative form um, and uh, you know just as it appears right here and then solve this problem. Okay, so here's the um, just some of the code in MATLAB. Um, we're just going to set up the problem. Um, and then uh, this is the tuning of the controller and then solving it and then opening up a web viewer we can also bring the results back into MATLAB to plot them. Okay so this is the um, you know a solver summary just want to cover just a few things on this um, you know this is the number of variables and equations that we had and this is the number of degrees of freedom or decision variables. Okay so those are decisions um, that the solver needs to make in order to try to minimize uh, this objective function. So that was the lowest that it could find right there. And it took um, you know, three iterations and you can see uh, the initial objective versus the, uh, the final objective and then you can see that this is the how the equations are converged. Okay, so the convergence is for the equations, the objective is for the objective function, um, and this is with the APOPT solver. Okay, so this, these are some of the results in, uh, in MATLAB. Um, in this case, we set up a little bit different of, a, uh, of an objective function, and we're gonna get into this more, but uh, we set up a, um, a dead band. Okay, so as long as the model value is within that dead band, then there's uh, no additional penalty. So you can see right from the start, okay, the controller saturated. There was an upper limit um, of 100% on this gas pedal. You, can, you can't go further than 100% um, or full injection rate possible. But we were still under, uh, so there's some air that accumulated here, and that's partially why we couldn't get to uh, not equal to zero for the final objective. Okay, so we had some error right there, but then after this point, um, I guess right here, it stays uh, stays within um, it stays within the dead band. Okay, within the dead band. Okay, so no additional um, error is accumulated at that point. Um, but you can see that what uh, the controller does is it tries to go to a constraint 100% and then drops back down to about 40, 45, and then a final uh, steady state value. So this is the gas pedal, and then this is the uh, velocity. Okay, so we can see the optimized profile, also our, our targets high and low that define uh, the dead band. Okay, so that uh, concludes uh, this very brief introduction to dynamic optimization. The main point here is that we have a um, a this is our statement. Uh, we can we can uh, put uh, the uh, dynamic optimization into a standard um, optimization format or framework, and then be able to solve very large scale and complex systems. <laughs>